a good rule. Don't answer the questions when they just start yelling at you. Come on, guys. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's go. Um, I wanted to ask about, I guess, press access to today. Mm -hmm. um, the, the meeting with the Vice President and uh, Vice President-elect Pence is close press, which is a break from past precedent. And um, Carol reported that um, the Obamas canceled a photo yeah, off. That's not true. Okay. Um, can you talk about then why we didn't have a photo op in the way that we have in, in previous uh, administrations and, and why there's no press access, access and, and particularly if this is... Well, ended. first of all, Justin, you just were in the Oval Office with the President of the United States and the President-elect, so it's not accurate to say that there is no, no press access. But let's just be clear about what's happened. I've, over the last eight years, I've uh, enjoyed the opportunity to have many of you in my office over the years advocating for greater access to the President and the work that he's doing in the Oval Office. And what that typically means is you coming in and advocating for the opportunity to see the President of the United States sitting in the Oval Office, photograph him sitting next to the person that he's meeting with, and then hear from both people about the meeting. That is the, that's the priority that has been conveyed to me in countless meetings with all of you over the last eight years. That is exactly what was provided today. That was not provided in 2008. I wasn't part of designing the press access for 2008, so I can't account for all of the reasons for that. But the press access that we put together today was based on the guidance that we've received from all of you over the last eight years about what the priority is. Uh, and we're pleased to be in a position to provide that today. It is an indication of the commitment that we have to transparency, and it's an indication that the President has to building public confidence in the shared commitment to a smooth and effective transition. What better way for uh, the American public to understand that the president-elect and the outgoing president of the United States uh, share a priority of a smooth and effective transition than to allow you all into the Oval Office to hear them uh, talk about uh, their commitment to that effort. I mean, one way to demonstrate that you guys are committed to that, I guess, effective transfer of power would be to show the vice president or show the first lady welcoming the their successors into the White House, and so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think we would all just agree that that would be lower in priority than what was provided today, and what was provided today is unprecedented in terms of the kind of access that was granted to previous White House press corps. So look, there's always going to be this back and forth, as I've stated before. Yes, the reason that this is relevant, and the reason that I'm asking the question is, while the president has come out and <coughs> sort of put on a cherry face, we know obviously many people here are disappointed. First Lady spoke passionately about how she found Donald Trump to be an unacceptable choice. So are we to read anything, or even putting aside whether we should read anything, is the reason that there wasn't press access to either of those events because the First Lady or the Vice President didn't want to be photographed or, or appear alongside? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I'm not aware that the First Lady's office was consulted about the press arrangements for today. Uh, I certainly didn't consult with them. Uh, what we can do uh, is... Uh, we can go back to the uh, White House photographer and see if there are any uh, photos from the greet uh, so that you all can get some uh, insight into how that went. So we'll, we'll follow up with you on that.